Hello? <laughs> um, I try to make something quite fun, I'm not too enterprising. Um, so uh, we will uh, today talk about. Uh, you you don't uh, you don't uh, hear me? Okay. I will try. Yeah, yes. like that. Okay. So um, we will talk today about uh, domain-driven design, event sourcing, and F sharp. So uh, I think if I try to make the intersection of people who know uh, part of each uh, year, uh, I can. <laughs> be near uh, zero probably, but uh, don't be afraid. <laughs> Everything will be okay. Uh, we will uh, do uh, things um, that are uh, quite easy. Uh, first thing is that um, we, when we talk about domain-driven design, uh, you already me hear about uh, the cargo sample. But we won't use the cargo sample today. Don't be afraid. Uh, today, we will talk about UNO, you know UNO, uh, like that, so here are the cards, UNO, okay, you can see it, so uh, UNO is a game, and uh, why will I use a game for uh, this sample, it's because uh, if we talk about the main business, uh, we will all argue about what are the rules, with UNO, the rules are written, so we will start with that, okay? Uh, you know the rules of the UNO or yes. everybody? The thing with UNO is you have uh, cards with colors like that and on a card with a color you can uh, either uh, play the same value or the same color. So here I can play on this one I can play the five blue okay or and then on the bl blue five I can play the blue zero okay and this is the first rule, but uh, we will start with only this one. I will show you all the rules and we will implement it live here after that. Yep, what is it? <laughs> it's me. <laughs> it's me, yeah. <laughs> Great. I try not to do this gesture anymore. So, um, <laughs> yeah, thank you. Um, so, um, the first thing uh, is uh, why TDD? You know uh, that TDD is more all about language. Okay, and I just explained to you the rules. And we will try to use the language you, we used uh, for the rules uh, inside our domain. And uh, you will see that F -sharp is quite effective at that. The other thing is about event sourcing. Uh, how many people here know event sourcing? Okay, so uh, I will start with a disambiguation that we will do some event sourcing and not some common sourcing. It will ta just take two or three minutes, but it's very important because a lot of people um, mix things together due to uh, people I like. Martin Fowler, but that wrote some article on, uh, on the subject calling it uh, event sourcing and that actually is common sourcing. Um, in event sourcing, what you're doing is quite simple. The first thing is that you have a command like this arriving to your system and then you will take a decision based on your current state on the command, okay? And based on that, you will explain what happens and raise an event. This is what you will store, uh, actually like that. But then something, uh, you need something more because um, you will need to uh, know what the state is. Because here the state cannot come from nowhere, so the way to build your state is to say that when something happens, you will apply what happened on the current state. So you take the event, input it here, and you will take state like that and based on current state on just what happened, you can output a new state, okay? And then you can just put this state here for the next decision and put this state here for the next application, okay? This is event sorting and the thing is that you will see in the some code sample we will do just after that, that we'll have comments 
events. At some point, we will have state. And we will have two functions, one that takes the decision, and that will have these two input and uh, output events, and another function that is called apply, and that will take uh, events and state and will output state. It won't be more difficult than that. So, uh, just to make the small dismigration uh, about uh, why we do things this way and not uh, Martin Fowler's way, it's uh, short but interesting. In Martin Fowler's case, and uh, so I put a really uh, a big, big warning here. Don't do that at home because you will get hurt. Um, the thing is that uh, is taking events from the outside and then store these events uh, in the store, like that. And then uh, he just uh, used that to compute state and back, okay? And pass the event out, but it's the same one actually that just go out here. Uh, the uh, very, very bad part about it is that um, when you take here, you combine the, fa the fact that you um, will take your decision based on external input, decision like that, uh, and, um, and the fact that you will apply uh, it on state. And the thing is that, uh, let's say that for your decision, you need for some external data. Okay. For instance, the current uh, uh, change rate for a currency or something like that. You will go to fetch the data and then use it inside and you will uh, decide what you want, make your calculation and do that. But when you will want to rebuild your state, you will have to remember what was the value of this, uh, of, uh, this uh, change. Okay? the rate. Um, so what will happen is that you will have to version and uh, make an history of all the change rate. That's not that good, but it's not too difficult. But then something else happened. Imagine that your decision process changes at some point in time. New uh, regulation or something like that. So the events that happened before that date had to be processed this way. But after this date, event have to be processed another way. Now you have to version your business rules. And you don't want that to happen in your system. Let's see why in the other version it doesn't happen. Ba based on uh, before the date, um, the command arrives and you take your decision here, okay, based on previous rules. And the event you emit from here will be the output of uh, the rule at that point in time. And this is what you will register. So when later the rule will change, the new events will be uh, emitted based on this rule. Okay? And then when you will uh, want to know your current state, you will just be, uh, use the previous events that were computed using the specific rules, and then you just have to know where you are from there, so you don't have any problem with versioning, okay? So we will use this schema, and forget the other one, this is what you will find in Martin Fowler's book, and don't follow it, it's a real uh, concern uh, for me, because I've seen a lot of people get hurt by that, uh, thinking they are doing even sourcing. Uh, no, last point, just, uh, we will do some F-sharp, I just want to tell you that this symbol, the forward pipe, uh, is just that if you have X on a function like that, this says, take what is before and give it to the function after, okay? It's just a way to forward things to function, to function, to function, to function, on the chain results. It's actually exactly the same as the point in C-sharp, but in a functional way, okay? Uh, other thing is that uh, you have automatic uh, partial occurring and partial application in f -sharp. For those that don't know it, it's just that if you write let add x and y equal x plus y, you can say let increment 
uh, equals add one. Let's see what it means. Add one is actually uh, if you take if you then write increment of five, take the definition. It's add one in uh, here. Okay, so add one here will come here. So this is just exactly the same as uh, one plus five. So it's six. Okay. Follow me. Actually, it's uh, the way to avoid the use of uh, inversion uh, of control containers uh, in F sharp. This is why I won't use this kind of thing here. Um, so we will uh, now implement the Uno game in F sharp. So oh, this is not my first code. Let's talk about the language here. Uh, I will reduce some windows because we uh, we don't need them. Quick, uh, quick, to see more code. Yeah, here. But F sharp code usually uh, fits well on the screen. Uh, yeah, no problem because uh, F sharp code can be read. Yeah, because my file still fits on the screen at uh, 150 percent. So um, I, we we were talking about games. So we will manage several games. So I just uh, create a game ID that is an integer. Okay, so we can have several games together uh, concurrently. Uh, the other thing then is the colors. So uh, colors is either uh, red, green, blue, or yellow. Easy. And uh, we have seen that uh, for now we were dealing only with uh, this kind of card, so the red uh, five or things like that. But there are also other cards that it didn't show you, like the kickback. Kickback uh, is uh, just to change the order in which player uh, play, uh, and they don't have a number on on them. So uh, to make it a bit more. Uh, a bit less naive, I added this card, but uh, you can add other cards exactly the same way. So a card is either a digit uh, of a value and a color, or a kickback of color. Okay? No problem. Direction, when we will use the kickback, is either clockwise or counterclockwise. You, will, you can see here that I'm using exactly the words we use in the rules, okay? Let's go to the next step. We have comments. Comments is, are the, the, those things that you ask your system to do. So as they will uh, be written using the imperative uh, tense. Um, so uh, for those who did the uh, event storming uh, this morning, uh, this is, you will just find what are on your stickers here, okay? So uh, my comments are uh, start game, for one game, a number of players, because it will be important to track which player has to play. We will play Wild Uno, by the way. Wild Uno is a Uno where um, the interface will not uh, track the current player so that only him can play. Actually, you have to follow what's happening in the game, because if you don't play at your turn, you will get some penalty, okay? So we will, add, we can, we will see how we can uh, add this kind of rule after that. So uh, it's uh, quite important. Uh, and when starting a, a game of Uno, we, we start by uh, putting a first card on top of the discard pile, okay? So this is this first card that is actually a card. Um, and then a player can play a card. So, play card. In this game, I'm the pl this player, and things will happen badly if it's not your turn, on this card. The card you, you decide to play. We will don't uh, see how uh, we manage uh, the card you have in hand. We will just see how we apply the card, the, the rules on the discard pile, okay? Uh, we can discuss about uh, interaction with hands after that. Uh, game ID just uh, get the ID from for each of the comments, but there are other ways to, to, to do it, but it's uh, simple here. 
Uh, then we have our events. Oh, yeah, it's here. And it's the same vocabulary. Game started, card played with uh, the same uh, values actually here. We don't need uh, more, but we'll see how we can add other events after that. So now uh, the rules. We will see what hap what's happening on this aggregate that is the discard pile and that will try to maintain the state of the game uh, consistent. Okay, so we have an aggregate here. Some events win will happen, some player will play, with even some, uh, for people who know interruptions, uh, they will try to play concurrently. And uh, the thing is that uh, the discard pile aggregate will maintain the consistent state of the discard pile so that a player that cannot play this card at this moment will get rejected and eventually uh, get a redder uh, penalty. Okay. So, the uh, first thing is that we will have to track some state for that. So, uh, here we create a record. So, it's an immutable structure. No blink here, okay. It's immutable, so the state of the game will be immutable, okay. But actually it's not a problem because we will create a new state for each tape and use that. Um, so, um, we have a uh, game ID to know that what game we are talking about. Uh, we will see uh, lot, some properties uh, below to, to know that. We have an empty state. This is what happened at the beginning before a game start. Uh, and then we can uh, know that the game started. So, first thing is uh, start game. I will uh, keep it here. Yeah, start game. So we start a game with a game ID, a player count uh, first card on the current state that should be empty, and this is what we will uh, check first. We do some sanity check. Less than two un players for Uno is just boring. Forget that. Find a third player and it will be more fun. Um, then, um, if the game already started, there is obviously a problem, just reject it, okay? So this is the first thing you always do in your decision uh, when uh, doing some event sourcing. First, uh, some sanity checks about the input because you don't want uh, to accept uh, comments that are not valid. And then the second thing is to check that given your state on when you, what you are really requested to do, uh, that uh, you can actually do it. Here you cannot start a game twice. So the, uh, you can either reject or you can also say, oh, it already started, it's not a problem. But if you, someone try to start a game with a different number of players or things like that, it can go bad. So the, I think the best idea here is to reject. And then once you have done that, you just uh, say what's happening. Game started. Okay, go. Easy enough. So um, here, we just implemented our first decision. Yeah. Then we'll take another decision. This is a play card. Uh, ah, yeah, uh, the squad got smaller, but as you can see, I could even maybe, oh no, 200 is a bit too much based on the fact that the line is not so long. Uh, why can't I? Chuk chuk. Reduce it? No. Uh, just a second. No, no, it just came back. Here. Yeah. 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 One, 150 is optimal for F sharp. Um, so, play card. This is the uh, fun stuff. A game ID, a player, a card, a state. You know what I'm talking about now, so uh, I won't uh, explain more. First thing is, if player is different from the current player in our state, so we understand that we will have to, we will have to track the current player, then player should play at his turn, take two cards. We will have another solution for that after, but for now we just reject and say, be careful. And then uh, we will just uh, match the card passed, uh, played by the player with the card that is at the top of the discard pile, okay? If the card played is a digit and uh, it has number one and color one and the other card on the top of the, 
of the discard pile is a digit with a two, with a, a value n2 and the color, uh, color two and, and n1 is equal to n2 or color one is equal to color two, hey, same value or same color, let's go, card played. Then invalid, play some same color or same value, okay? Here again, we can apply a penalty after that uh, by raising another event, but uh, maybe we will try to implement it directly on screen. Uh, then, okay, we, we are almost done. The, the other thing is to apply the state changes, okay? So the two parts that we have seen before is uh, the handling of command. Uh, actually, I will just show you here. I have a small function that is uh, handle and that will take a command, whatever it is, and call the appropriate function, okay? So uh, th I just did this this way, separating the two functions so that uh, I don't put everything in a single uh, function. It would be a bit uh, big, so it's just a dispatch, okay? Uh, I can go back to apply here. And uh, apply takes a state and match the event with the different events that can happen, okay? So if we try to apply to a state this event, we just return the new state, easy. State with the ID passed in the event, so now our game has an ID. We can say it game already started to true, was to false in the empty uh, game. The player count we record it. Current player is player zero, and the top card is the first card. We're ready to go. And oh no, I don't even don't have to, to scroll. Actually, it's on, on screen already. Uh, when a card is played, the new state is just a calculation of the next player. You will uh, notice uh, uh, cyclic calculus. Um, and then uh, top card is the card. Ready for the next turn. That's all, almost. But uh, I don't. I almost have no other code uh, to show you uh, at that point. This is our domain. What's inside invalid? Up? In what? Invalid. Up. Uh, uh, it's an invalid operation exception. It's just a function that raises the exception. It that's all. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, so it stops the process, and, but uh, there are other ways to do it. Uh, we can discuss uh, about it uh, later, but the first uh, simple option is that just fail, report the error, and that's all, okay? So um, this is how domain, we are using exactly only words of our domain to implement it. So we are doing domain-driven design, actually. There is no extra first. Uh, something that I would change is that I would uh, probably uh, remove the fact that here it is an int, and I would uh, make another object, uh, a structure that is a pair of the current player and the number of players so that you can create an arithmetic of on it. Next player, previous player, based on the num num uh, current number of players, okay? So you have even better vocabulary rather than this kind of bad uh, mathematical expression. You create a value object, uh, player turn, and then you have next, previous. And then you have even a better vocabulary for uh, your um, domain. I won't uh, do it here because uh, I don't think we will have time, but you understand the idea. Then um, you can say, okay, it's just a game and it's just for fun. And uh, then uh, you showed us how to conceptually do some event sourcing, but we are not storing all those things. So uh, it's just cheating. Let's continue. Uh, here we will have an event store. Uh, creating a fake event store is quite easy. Just here the interface is that. Uh, Often uh, you will see uh, interfaces for the event store that are more like uh, get all events for this ID. Uh, I like the fold events uh, interface. I will explain you uh, what it means. Um, so an event store, 
whatever uh, you do usually has only two methods. Get the event, save the event. Okay. Here we will also do the fold inside. So if you go to the get the events uh, version, you can r just remove that and uh, see that you will say get the event for this stream from this version. And usually what you will get is a list of the events uh, returned. Okay? Uh, what I do with fold is that uh, I also say um, we have a seed here. This is an empty state. We will pass it. And we will give a function that takes a state and an event and return a state. Oh, this is our apply function. Yeah, okay, we will pass it here. And what it will do is while it's reading the events, it will first take the first state and for each event call that. And for next event, apply, 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 apply. And in the end, it will return the version of the state and the state. Okay? Easy. The other one is even simpler. Save events, give, tell me what stream it is. What version you expect? Uh, I will talk about why it can be important. Just forget it for now. And uh, the list of events you want to save, and it, it will save it in the transaction. That's all. So let's implement our store in memory. Oh, this one is a bit longer, but it will be easy. So a stream. Uh, a stream will be just a mutable list uh, to be more easy uh, because I don't care because it's fake code, so it can be mutable. Uh, don't do this in uh, production. Uh, so uh, you will have just a list of event, of pair of event on integers, the event on the version of the event. Just uh, make things easier to track. So now we can implement our in-memory event store. And the thing is that to fold the events, you just have to uh, try to find the stream in the map. So uh, I have a map here, streams, it's an empty map. So it's a dic basically a dictionary, okay? Uh, so I try to find the stream from its ID. If I find none, I can say, okay, it's version minus one on the seed. Okay, the first state, because we apply no event, so we are still in the first state. And if I find a stream, just take every pair uh, events and event version from the stream. If the, here's the array version, so uh, it forgets all the previews, but it won't be very useful here, but it's to be compatible for something after. So it takes all the events, uh, it creates a list, it reverses the list because I uh, add uh, things at the head. So I just reverse, we have no, no performance concern here for this fake implementation, okay. Uh, and then I just fold. So fold is basically uh, aggregate in uh, link queue. So uh, take the function and apply it. The small thing here is to get tr to track the version uh, while applying uh, the actual uh, apply function. Save event is just uh, put the thing in the dictionary. Yeah. So now we have that. You, we can write a command handler. And the command handler will, okay, uh, take uh, the commands and do the whole uh, dance. So it will uh, get an event store. You have your stream ID from your game ID just by creating the expected, uh, uh, expected uh, string. Then get by ID uh, is to get the state by ID, okay? So what it does, it just it says for the event using the apply function on the empty state for these streams from version zero. Here, you will receive your state and its version. Save does exactly the same thing, ex except that uh, it converts the game ID to a stream ID, okay? So this is my repository. You know the thing uh, that has uh, uh, 15, 50 pages in uh, domain-driven design. 
Here is the implementation actually. No object, no, just use those, those two functions. Here there is a small trick to, ke to keep track of the version, but I, uh, since uh, I asked you to forget about the expected version, uh, we won't see it here. But the thing is that then when you receive a command, just get the ID of the command, get the state by ID, pass it to the handle function with the command. So the state here will be passed here. So we will have handle command state. Okay? And then what does the handle command return? Events. Okay. Pass it to save for this ID. Save ID events. That's all. Small code. Uh, I forgot to put it in 150 feet. Then uh, just uh, for the trick, uh, I created an event handler, uh, but it's very uh, small and basic. It's just that when the events are published, it prints it on screen. Okay. Of course, here yeah, usually you will uh, create your projections in your to your SQL database in your uh, Neo4j graphs to, to make some analysis from from uh, the previous party uh, games and uh, put it uh, in a cube so that you can make some statistics and uh, all that. If you want some documents about uh, who won at the end of the party, you can put it in a document store or whatever. Uh, it's your problem. But here I just take the event, match it with the different things on pre. Okay? Read more about CQRS to know what you can do with uh, this kind of event handler. So, last thing is our program. Our program is here. Let's in create uh, the store. We create a discard pile event handler with the store. So now we have a handle command that will handle actually the command doing all the stuff using this store. So handle start game with this value, then handle play cards, and then play card on play card. We can run it uh, now like that. Yeah, it works. So here, those things are written here because the thing was stored in the event store and then the event happened and we can show it. But what you can see is that it keeps track of the player here. This is the actual good player for uh, our um, game. Okay, so everything worked. You can think that I'm uh, a bit joking you uh, using uh, in memory. Uh, that it's a toy project, but things will get far more complicated when you want to really put it in production. Actually, I was trolling you uh, using uh, in memory uh, event store. Because here, I have just another implementation that also almost fit on screens. I think it's, uh, with spaces it's 50 lines long. Here, that use uh, Greg Young's uh, event store that I'm using in production because uh, I've not restarted it for the last six months and it uh, just takes hundreds of uh, thousand events every day. Uh, so um, here we will just use exactly the same code just by implementing the interface you've seen before in 50 lines, we have something that is production ready. Okay? So, what I do is create an event store connection uh, at local address, connect. Then I have my JSON.NET serializer uh, that I can create here. Uh, the good thing with uh, JSON.NET is that it's now uh, able to serialize uh, F-sharp discriminated unions list and things like that out of the box. So uh, it's far better for the sample to use uh, a serializer than can do all this properly. Um, so uh, serialize an event uh, is easy. Just create a stream writer, serialize. And then you create some event data. So it's the structure you use to create to uh, give events to the event store. So uh, I create uh, an ID, I get type name. Uh, this is uh, JSON, so I indicate it to the store because it has a special process for uh, JSON. 
and then I just uh, take the stream uh, serialized uh, to array to create the structure. So at the end of the serialized function, I have something I can, can pass directly to uh, the event store API. The other direction, the serialization is just take the event uh, bytes, find the expected types, so it's here. And then uh, if you cannot find it, uh, just forget. And if you know the type, just deserialize it, OK? And then, so I, I disposable is to close uh, the connection to the event store in the end. But then my event store implementation is here. So uh, the thing is that I will ask the event for version. I will only took those uh, I can deserialize and then fold with the same thing I had before using my function. Here, this function is just get 500 events for this stream from this position. So I start at zero. I get them. I yell bank them. It's the same as doing uh, in C sharp uh, for each yell return. You know, the, uh, this thing that is usually uh, useless and uh, disturbing. So it will just return the seconds with all the events here, but then if it's not the end of the stream, I will also uh, return all the results from a call to myself for the next number. Okay? So this way, this will output uh, the state and the expected version. And to save, just map with serialized all the new events. Here I have the serialized event store up on two stream, stream ID, expected version, serialized event, then just publish it on my interface. Go, run the event store, here, open a window to see what's happening, here, have my streams, here no streams created so far, uh, I will uh, put some breakpoints inside, so uh, I, I, I I need my keyboard maybe to debug. Okay, uh, program. Just let's, let's switch to the real production ready implementation uh, here. Let's go. So I connect to the event store, I create my handler, and then I start the game. What you can see is that the event was actually published uh, for the projections. And there is um, already a new stream in my event store discard pile here. You can see the serialized. So you can see that it's game started with fields one, four digits and red. You can surely get better serialization, but anyway, it works. Um, so the thing is that it's recorded. So when we will do the next command, it will load it from the event store and create next command like here. Quick, quick. You see on the right the event happening. Okay? So, um, with that, you can see that uh, doing uh, event sourcing DDD with F sharp is not like uh, magic tricks, uh, complicated mathematics, and that you can really, really focus on your domain because. Uh, here I, I have just implemented uh, one rule of UNO. The total code with two implementations of the event store is less than 220 lines. Okay. And uh, from now on, if I add code to this, it won't ever be new infrastructure code. It will only be domain code with the expressiveness you've seen. So from now on, I can just focus 
on my problem, implementing the domain. And so I can try to find better terms uh, to be sure that uh, the rules are okay. I will just show you how I test uh, the things, but it will be very short because I have only five minutes left. Um, the thing is that then you can test things like that, and there is no sp uh, magic framework for that. So um, given nothing happened before, when start game, expect start game. Okay, here, I expect uh, an argument exception because it was uh, zero players. And here, here uh, I already, given that a game started, uh, when I start a game, I expect an invalid operation exception. Okay? Uh, this is the way I test my code, and the thing is that, once again, there is no uh, magic framework uh, for that. My framework is here. Given events, it just returns the list. When command, it just returns a pair with the two values. And expect, it just do the thing. I use a pretty printer for my events. So the pretty printer is uh, just here, so that I can have uh, nice uh, specifications. And then the only thing I have to do is Replay events under command should equal expected. This is my test framework. And now I can start to test things like that uh, when playing a card. That gets a bit more uh, tricky. Yeah, here. Uh, start getting uh, this is this one? Yeah. No. Uh, no, this is already the, the previous one. I just need to uh, when playing card here. So yeah, yeah, I check that the game should have started, and same value should be accepted. So here I test that a game started with a three, and if I play a card uh, three, uh, I expect a card plays with uh, this value, but. Uh, different value on color should be rejected. If given a game started when player card, uh, it's not the same color, it's not the same value. Uh, expect uh, invalid operation exception. And here, uh, a player, uh, first player should play at his turn. So uh, here, it's not the good player that uh, played, so you will get an invalid ex operation exception, okay? So um, the idea is really here that you can really focus on domain-driven design using this kind of code and it's production ready. I use it uh, in production with uh, millions of uh, events every day. So, you know, uh, in F sharp, so you know it can be done. Yes. Very naive quest question. Yes. Uh, digit, it's uh, F sharp. Uh uh, no, no, no. Uh, digit was part of our um, uh, of our um, of our deck uh, because uh, what we call a digit is this kind of card. Okay, sorry. Uh, it's no, it's not here. It's in the deck file uh, because a card is either a digit or a kickback. So it's just the name for this structure that contains an internal color. That's all. Yeah. Other question. Yes. Uh, yes. Uh, if you look at uh, Locat's code uh, by uh, Renat Abdulin, uh, you will find quite uh, good, uh, actually quite excellent uh, F C sharp implementation of even sourcing. But uh, you will have a lot more first. Like you will usually need things like base classes. You will uh, have a repository interface implementation. You will have to provide, immu uh, you will have mutation inside your new domain. And one thing that is not safe when doing mutation on your state is that um, if during the, the decision phase, you have a state that is mutable. And if you mutate it from here, you're in danger because the only, the only mutations that should happen on state are in the apply method, okay? So nothing will prevent you into your decision code 
to, uh, to change the state. Okay, so you just will have to be careful not to change the state uh, if you don't make state immutable. But the thing is that having immutable state in C sharp is really more cumbersome because uh, in C sharp you have two options uh, to create uh, immutable state. This is uh, you will have a constructor with all the values. Okay, so. Each time you will want to create a new state, you will have to uh, pass every value, even though that does not change. It will become a mess when you have a lot of values. Or you will have to create some builders that will copy everything except the things, but you will have to create the extra code for the builders. So you need more tooling to do the same thing and uh, the intent uh, of what you want to do. Those of, uh, those uh, files here is uh, more diluted in more infrastructure and helper code. So yes, you can actually do that in any language because I didn't rely on any special feature of F sharp. Just that in F sharp you have so few uh, extra words around your um, domain language that actually it becomes quite kind of DSL for your domain language. You won't have the same effect with C sharp. Other question? Yes. If I want to put a, a web UI for this game, yes, uh, the web UI uh, usually will have two parts. Um, the first thing is that uh, here in my program, I give uh, the commands directly. Uh, usually you will receive uh, commands from the outside. So uh, what you will do is uh, have uh, uh, HTTP server that will, get the, that will get the command and pass it to the function, okay? So instead of calling here, you will uh, listen on an HTTP listener, receive a command, and pass this command to, to the rest of the code. So we just add this code, but it can also come from, uh, uh, for instance, uh, Rabbit, uh, RabbitMQ uh, or ZeroMQ messages or things like that, and you will get the comments as objects, uh, as messages that arrive, and you will put it in the rest of the code, but it's just uh, a matter of infrastructure to receive comments. And then uh, for the queries, uh, in your uh, projection, you will keep track of the current state. So you will uh, be able to uh, save uh, instead of just writing on the screen here uh, what's happening. You will save the information that you're interested in in a, data, in a database, whatever it is. Uh, so the thing is that if you want to keep track of the current player, just in one of the document or table, save the, pl the current player. If you want to know how much player uh, there are, just listen to the game started, uh, game started event and save this value in your database. And then from your screen, the only thing that you will have to do is get those values and display it. That's all. If you want to have an history of the last card that was played, make a list and add it uh, as it pass, and then you will just have to display it. No problem. Okay? Uh, in, in the event handler, you don't have the state. You only have the events. So yes, exactly. Would yeah. you uh, duplicate? Uh, you yes, but you duplicate only what's interesting to you in the context of the view that will display this value. But since all decisions have already been taken, uh, what will happen uh, in uh, event handler code are only replace the previous value with a new one or increment this value with that or just a very, very simple operation. If you have complex operation inside your uh, event handlers, uh, this means that some decision has not been taken uh, previously and there should be more uh, information in your event so that you don't have to take this uh, decision after the fact. No more question? Oh, last question, <laughs> if we have time. Uh, if uh, the event store can, can't uh, save the event? 
uh, in this case, uh, the thing did not happen because actually I won't release my uh, if I I'm still in the in my method while um, if you look at the program here. The save is synchronous with uh, this method, so it will fail the method. So I had taken internally the decision to do that, but actually it did not happen before it saved in the event store. I've just taken the decision to do it. I tried to save. It didn't save. Nothing happened. Okay? But did you in the concurrence of your master? Yeah. Uh, the thing is that uh, this is why you have the expected version because if someone adds an event before you in the event store, you will say, I want to save this based on the state I had for this version and it will really reject your uh, right when you do that. There are two options here. Either uh, you just fail by saying, I can't do that because something happened in between and uh, maybe you don't want to do this operation, know that things have changed. Uh, the other option is simply uh, to reload state with the new events, make the, the new decision based on this new state, and try again to save uh, with a new expected version. If another thing happens, you can retry, and at some point you can also uh, fail if it's too much retry. Okay? Thank you.